What? Hello. Hello. Hey guys. Welcome back. We're going to talk to you today and introduce a project that we've been working on for our history and social studies unit. It's really important to study, study social studies because we need to learn about other cultures and places around the world. Social studies is, an, is a study of social, self, I can't pronounce, relationships and the functioning of society. Yeah, it's also important for us to study and learn from history. History is the study of past events, particularly things that happened uh, that other humans have been through. From history, we can develop a better understanding of the world. Oh. <laughs> history can also help us to learn and understand other people, which goes back to social studies. Yep, history can even help us learn about and understand ourselves. All of that's right. It can teach us a working knowledge and understanding of change. Things are constantly changing around us all of the time, and we can learn from people in the past about what not to do in our future. If we don't know history, we may actually repeat some of the same mistakes. So history also gives us the tools we need to be better decision makers. That's right. Both history and social studies are extremely important. So we're going to do a project to learn more about a country. Karosh will, uh, Karosh will present for us tomorrow, um, but I'm interested in which country you're each interested in studying. Mondana, what did you want to study? Oh, you're muted. <laughs> I'm always muted. That's okay. I would like to study Canada. Um, the study that I picked already and I've, are, I'm going to present tomorrow is Japan. So those are both really cool countries. Uh, Mandana, why did you pick Canada? My parents visit Canada every year and I want to go too. That's really awesome. I want to go too. So when you go, make sure I go, okay? All right, <laughs> Kurosh, why did you pick Japan? I picked Japan because I like a lot of things Japanese. I... And uh, like one of my favorite things is like sushi. Uh, uh, and yeah, that's why I picked Japanese. Nice. So uh, you were a little bit breaking up right there, but I know you. So I know that you said you like sushi and anime, right? Yep. And Nintendo. <laughs> nice. And Nintendo. Nintendo. Okay, cool. That's really cool. I'm excited to see how your presentations turn out. So let's go over some of the things that you need to include in there. So you've already completed step one, which was to pick your country. Step two is to research the country and fill out everything in the World Atlas Project Instructions Google Doc that we will share with you. And step three, once you're done with your research, create a Google slide presentation with all of that information in there. Finally, step four, you will present your country to us so that we can learn about different places too. So let's go over what some of your research will look like. I've sent you that Google document that's called World Atlas Project Instructions. Also, there's a link below that you'll be able to do this project as well. In that instructions document, there is a link to worldatlas.com. This is a great website to find a lot of information about different countries around the world and have some of the experiences that you can get there. Um, but you'll also want to use other reputable sources for your information. Nice. So let's talk about what a reputable, reputable, that's a hard one, reputable source for information is. A reliable source is one that provides information based on strong evidence. So some examples you could use that are reliable sources are Kidtopia, Google Scholar, and Britannica. We will link these below in the description as well as in the Google Docs so you can use them, okay? So um, it's just like Mandy said, you probably want to use those websites. And the reason why you don't want to use Wikipedia, a lot of people know this, but some might not, is the fact that Wikipedia, you cannot, like, not, you cannot, anyone can go in and edit anything in Wikipedia. The fun fact, in first grade, you shouldn't do this, but I changed the birth, the, like George Washington's birthday in Wikipedia on an account. But it only lasted, since George Washington's Wikipedia page is such a big one, it only lasted like five minutes and that account got banned. But that's my point. Anyone can be changing any facts about 
anything on Wikipedia. So you should definitely use the sites that Mandy suggested. Sneaky, sneaky first grade Karosh. <laughs> it is really important to use reliable sources when you're doing your research so that to the best of your knowledge, the in information that you're presenting us and other people is correct. We're going to go over things that you're going to be researching about your country that you choose. Don't worry, it's all in the worksheet below to help you complete your research. Nice. So for the first part, we just want to know the facts about your country, right? These include things like the leader, capital city, language spoken, size, population, currency, climate, and important products that come from that country. Next, you need to find a world map of your country. Just like Google the map and then grab an arrow and point to your country. So like United States, you just point, put a big arrow on a map pointing to United States. Am I muted? No. Okay. Then we want to see a map of your country. It should be a picture of your country that has eight to ten cities labeled on it. One of those cities has to be the capital of your country. And after that, you should include a picture of the flag for your country. It's also important to understand different things about the flag, such as why the country chose that to be their symbol. We want to know the meaning that's behind the flag, so please be sure to include that. On the next slide, you'll include a timeline of important events. You should find four key events in the history of your country. Were they participants in a war? If so, what side did they fight on? Was there a civil war? important protests or changes in the country's leadership? Was there an environmental disaster? These events must include the date that it happened and an explanation of the event. Next, you're going to research a VIP, which stands for a very important person. Find a very important person from your country you choose and tell us what he or she is famous for in your country. One of the most fun things to study about different areas around the world are the holidays they celebrate. You're going to get to tell us uh, all about different holidays and celebrations from the country you chose. You need to pick at least two important holidays or celebrations that happen in the country and explain them to us. Don't forget pictures. Next, you're gonna let us know some things about the culture of that country. First, we wanna know if there's a popular instrument or type of music that began in your country or what's important to the culture of that country. Or you can pick an instrument that might've been created in your country. Please include pictures, a video clip, or a music clip from YouTube to share with us. Muted. You're muted. Really? All the time. You like playing sports? I love playing soccer. The next thing you need is to include a popular sport played in the country that you chose. It would be cool if you told us about a famous sport figure, a famous sport figure from the country and always include pictures. So, as most know, sushi is my favorite food, but uh, and that's from Japan. But what? What a shocker. <laughs> well, what's your favorite food from your country or just a popular food from your country? Just like try and find a food from your country that you think you'd like and then put a picture in, in it with, with the, next to the food. Nice. Yep, we all know that about you, Karosh. Next, you should figure out at least three animals that are found in your country and include pictures of the cute little guys. Many countries also have their own types of traditional clothing. See what people from your country wore or even still wear and make sure to include those pictures. One of the best things about traveling with my family is the different country, uh, uh, is the different country and all of the cool places we get to go visit and um, visit in those new countries. You're going to want to share with us three, th Three. <laughs> Three famous places to visit in the country you chose. Make sure you tell us where they're located, why they're famous, and a picture. The last thing you need to include is just something interesting that you find out about your country. Maybe as you're researching or something you find out after you're done researching. Like just something you find cool. 
like uh, in Japan, there's this sushi restaurant in a subway that has a year long waiting list. So is that your fact? Yeah, that's mine. You sneak preview. <laughs> all right. So links below will be a worksheet that has all of this information on it for you to fill out. Then you can go ahead and create a Google, Google slide presentation and share it with your teachers or us or really anyone. Yep. So once you complete every single step, then you're going to be asked to eventually present that. So I thought that it would be a good idea to go over a few presentation skills that we should remind ourselves of. So the first one is to be confident. Karosh, what is one thing you can do to ensure that you're confident to present the content? To be confident, you have to know your material. You have to know what you're talking about. If, you're, if you don't know what you're gonna say, like my hesitation right there, it'll seem less confident than if you have your entire script memorized and you're, and you're more into it, you know? So make sure you have the confidence. Great, Karosh, that's right. The second thing to remember is to be articulate. So if you know that there's a word you don't know how to pronounce, it might be a good idea to actually write it out how you pronounce it, right? So in a way that makes sense to you phonetically, right? So for example, maybe you don't know how to say sushi. Okay, I know that we know that one, but you could say something like this, right? It makes sense to me. There's, an, there's a proper way of doing it phonetically, but if I were to read it like this, sushi, right? That's how we pronounce it, right? So something that will remind you how to pronounce it might be a good idea. Little notes on an index card are always a good idea. Sushi, yep, exactly like that. So be sure to sit up, um, oop, sorry. <laughs> so Mandana, what is another important thing a presenter should keep in mind? Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pretend that never happened. Have fun. This is very important because if you are enthusiastic, then you might lose your audience. If you lose your audience, there's no one to watch you. <laughs> be yourself. And it is okay to laugh and be fun. It, as long as you aren't distracting from your main points. All right. Now you know what your goals are for doing your research and what's expected of you for your presentation. Remember, have fun and share your projects with us and your teachers and your family so that everybody can learn about the places that you chose. Bye. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.